In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at sum and difference of cubes, factoring techniques. So there's two main formulas for sum and difference of cubes. Either you have a situation where it's x cubed minus y cubed, or you have a situation where it's x cubed plus y cubed. So in the event that it is x cubed minus y cubed, it'll break up into x minus y times x squared plus xy plus y squared. And likewise, if it's x cubed plus y cubed, it breaks up into x plus y x squared minus xy plus y squared. So notice the idea here is subtraction goes with subtraction, addition with addition, and then it'll switch that sign here. So if you can memorize that, uh, it makes kind of understanding, remembering the difference of cubes formula a little easier. If you want to see why this is true, you can go ahead and expand all this out and simplify. You'll see you get these this answer to the left, likewise with the other one. Also through long division, you can also prove it. If you were to take x cubed minus y cubed and divide it by x minus y, you'll get this as your quotient. It'll be another proof of it. I'll leave that to you guys to check out. Let's take a look at applying this. So for our first question here, we have x cubed plus 8. So to use my sum of cubes, obviously you see here that I have a addition, so it's sum of cubes formula. You're going to have to express this as a sum of cubes. So therefore, I can rewrite that 8 as a 2 cubed. Now the formula I want to use is I want to use this formula, x plus y, x squared minus xy plus y squared. So to use this formula here, notice that your x will take the place of x and your y here will take the place of 2. So therefore, everywhere I see in this formula here, everywhere I see an x, I'm going to leave it as an x. Everywhere I see a y, I put a 2. So this will be x plus 2 times x squared plus, uh, minus, I should say, 2x plus 2 squared and then this will factor into x plus 2, x squared minus 2x plus 4. Notice you can't factor this any further. A quick check of the discriminant, if you are curious why you can, if I do the, a quick check of my discriminant here, you get b squared uh, minus 4ac, uh, to which we end up getting here 4 minus 16. It actually gets less than 0. So this has no further roots. They're complex roots, and we're done. So there's your fully factored x cubed plus 8. Let's try another. So for the next one here now, obviously it's a subtraction. We have a difference of cubes. So I have to be able to express this as a power of 3. Well, y is already expressed as a power of 3. 64 as a power of 3 would be 4 cubed. So now what I can do here is go ahead and use my difference of cubes formula. So I know that x cubed minus y cubed factors into x minus y, x squared plus xy plus y squared. In which case, this will factor into y minus 4, y squared plus 4y plus 4 squared. So now fully factored, we have y minus 4, y squared plus 4y plus 16. And now our cubic, y cubed minus 64, is fully factored. Let's take a look at another. So for this one here, you're noticing I want to be able to apply my sum or difference of cubes formula. I see the power of 3 here, but the problem is, is there is no power I can raise to 3 to give me a 4 and likewise with 108. So a common technique in factoring, this is always should be what you look for, is is there a GCF first? Well, this actually has a GCF of 4. So if I factor out a 4 here, you end up getting t cubed plus 27. And now you're in good shape because now I can go ahead and take that... 27 and write that as a 3 cubed. Now I can go ahead and use my sum of cubes formula. And this would be t plus 3 times t squared minus 3t plus 3 squared. And we end up getting 4 times t plus 3, t squared minus 3t plus 9. And now we are fully factored. Let's try another. So again, the same idea with this question. Uh, we want to be able to do a GCF on this first, right? I I don't, the, the 5 here I can't really express as a power of 3, so I'm going to GCF out of 5. So I'm going to, if I factor out of 5, I get y cubed plus 1 over 27. Now how can I express that as a power of 3? Well, the y is already expressed as a power of 3, and I can rewrite the 1 over 27 as y, as 1 third to the power of 3. Now what I have here is a sum of cubes formula. So with my sum of cubes formula, this becomes 5 times y plus a third times y squared minus one-third y plus one-third squared, in which case I get 5 times y plus a third y squared minus one-third y plus a ninth. 
and now we are fully factored. So you notice here, the general idea is, okay, do I want to do a sum or difference of cubes? Okay, I see a summation sign in this case. All right, well, is there a GCF first? Yes, there's a GCF, GCF of 5 I can take out. Now, how am I going to express each as a power of 3? Well, I'm, in lucky, I'm lucky here the y is already a power of 3. The 1 over 27 is not. Well, how do I express that as a power of 3? Just write it as one third quantity cubed. And now I go ahead and I go to my sum of cubes formula. And these are all just placeholders. So you don't have to use the x and y. For instance, you can put, you know, box cubed plus triangle cubed. And that's going to factor into whatever is in that box plus whatever is in that triangle times whatever is in that box squared minus the product of the box and triangle plus the triangle squared. So they're just placeholders. I mean, you don't have to have just a variable. Uh, you can have a summation of variables, uh, numbers, etc. All right, let's try another. So for this problem here with x to the power of 6 minus 1, if I want to use the difference of cubes formula, obviously I see the subtraction symbol, so I'm thinking difference of cubes. I'm going to write this as x squared to the power of 3 minus 1 cubed. Now notice I've expressed x to the power of 6 as a power of 3. I've expressed 1 with a power of 3. Now I can go ahead and use my difference of cubes formula, in which case this will factor into... And just to remind you, here's your difference of cubes formula. This will factor into x squared minus 1 times, you're going to square that first term, so it'll be x to the fourth. And then it's going to be plus the product of the first two, which will just be x squared, and then plus that last term squared. So this will factor into x squared minus 1 times x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1. Now you notice here, we've actually got more we can do. The x squared minus 1, it's a difference of squares. So this will be x minus 1, x plus 1, x to the 4th plus x squared plus 1. And now we are fully factored. Continuing on here, I want to take a look at another difference of cubes formula here. So we see the difference again. Again, the deal is to make these each as powers of 3. So the x is already a power of 3. I can rewrite this expression here as 2 times x minus 2, the entire expression to the power of 3. And now you'll see here, this is the place of my x, and this takes the place of my y in my difference of cubes formula. So this will factor into x minus, and this is my y, times x squared, plus the product of these two, which will be 2x, x minus 2, plus the last term squared, which will be 2x minus 2 quantity squared. So this factors into, you might as well expand this out a bit. You get x minus 2x plus 4 times uh, x squared. I'm going to go ahead and distribute this where you get uh, 2x squared minus 4x plus this becomes 4x minus 2 squared. And if we simplify this a bit more, I'm getting here negative x plus 4 times, we might as well simplify where we can. So I notice here I have the x squared and the 2x squared. I can put those together. So this will be uh, 3x squared minus 4x plus 4. I'm going to go ahead and expand this out. So square the first, first times second times 2, square the last. And we keep on kind of cleaning this up a bit. 4 into the brackets plus 16. And I get negative x plus 4 times... Collecting like terms here, we get 3x squared and 4x squared. It's going to give me 7x squared. And then we have here negative 4x and negative 16x is negative 20x, and lastly, plus 16. So typically in math, you don't want to leave things with a minus sign in front. It just looks unpleasant. So they'll typically factor that minus sign out, leave it as x minus 4, and this be 7x squared minus 20x plus 16. And uh, just a quick check here. If you check the discriminant on this, it's negative, has complex roots, does not factor any further in terms of real number system. Okay, so take a look at that problem. Let's try one more. So for this problem here, we want to do express this as a sum of cubes. Both of these, this is my x, and this takes the place of my y. So this will factor into x plus y times x squared minus the product of these two here, 
plus the square of the last. At this point here, I really wouldn't expand anything out. I don't really see much happening in terms of simplification here. Um, so we just leave it in this form here. But at any rate, you can see that you can factor using your sum of cubes. All right, that concludes today's lesson on sum and difference of cubes. Uh, you know, go through these examples, try them out yourselves, try to match that pattern. But just keep in mind, it's always expressing everything as box cubed plus or minus your triangle cube gives you your sum and difference of cubes formula. Thank you.